You read the Bible, Greg. Yes. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Sort of fits this occasion. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Blessed is he who in the name of charity and goodwill shepherds the weak through the valley of darkness, for he is truly his brother's keeper and the finder of lost children. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Soldiers of the Universe is the worst game I've ever played in my life. No hyperbole, no exaggeration, I mean it. It's without a doubt worse than One Day for Ched, the Stalin subway. Worse than Hoi 4 if you can even believe that. However, in a way, I think it's a game that more people ought to know about. It is a masterpiece that does everything right in its own way. Because this is the quintessential example on how not to make a first-person shooter. When you think of first-person shooters, you probably think of several kinds of games. Maybe Call of Duty, highly unrealistic in many ways, but still fun and addicting to play with just how well the games tend to be made. Halo, medical disorder, every bit as unrealistic as COD, but utilizes a more classical style of enemy design and utilizes large and open maps. Perhaps you even think of the Arma franchise, which excellently tends to the needs of those looking for a more realistic take on FPS games, and requires patience and a much more tactical thought process. Soldiers of the Universe seems to make an attempt to simultaneously be all of these, but also simultaneously does all of these extremely poorly. It can't claim to be like Call of Duty, as the game's pace is slower than a crawl and the gunplay is god-awful. It can't claim to be like Halo, as the literal one and only enemy type in this game is generic terrorist, and the levels are more linear than even a straight line. And the game can't claim to be like Arma, since the combat is extremely unrealistic, and there's literally zero strategic thought to be had anywhere at all. I feel as though the dev team behind Soldiers of the Universe attempted to create a unique unique style of gameplay by taking aspects of various existing franchises, but it's painfully clear that they lack the vision and the talent to create such a game, and it would have been infinitely more efficient for them to have just followed another game's framework while adding smaller unique aspects of their own which would have allowed it to stand on its own merits. One thing's for certain, Soldiers of the Universe does indeed have at least one story. I say at least one story because everything, and I mean everything, brought up in the beginning of the game during the first cutscene is dropped after it ends, and none of it is ever brought up again. If the subtitles are to be believed, you play as a Turkish guy named Hakan. The opening cutscene immediately begins with you, Hakan, receiving a phone call from your dad, Selim. Traitors within the country have invaded the streets. It's a coup attempt, but this time we're keeping everything under control. The Turkish government shall prevail this. We learn in broken English that apparently Turkey has fallen victim to a coup d'etat led by a terrorist leader named Adnan... 
I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Yeah, so if you couldn't tell already, this game has a reputation for being a massive propaganda piece for the country of Turkey. We have always brought peace and justice to humanity for thousands of years. There is not any despotism and assimilation in our glorious history. Continuing on with the opening cutscene, however, over the phone we hear Hakan's dad be murdered by Adnan. Ah, he then. Dad? 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 Dad, no, please, no! <laughs> Whoever you are, I'm gonna find you, and, and I will end you. You <laughs> fucked up my face. Cut to a future day, and you're at your dad's memorial, and some old dude named Barbaros approaches you with a letter from your dad. My dear son, Hakan, if you're reading this letter, I've already attained the grace of God and I'm on his sacred path. Yeah, we know, we heard that happen. Return to Turkey without a blink, and find Barbaros Karos Manolu. He's literally right behind us! He brought us the letter to begin with! The only real point of this letter is to retroactively establish that your character, Hakan, is apparently an efficient Special Forces soldier, and this is done with literally just half a sentence. And find Barbaros Karos Manolu. He shall explain the reason of your years of training. Fade to black, and we open to a high-tech looking facility called Ormoya, where apparently the Turkish government is developing... Well, I don't know what they're making, actually. I guess some kind of technology that will quote-unquote neutralize all known weapons? Being developed. A technology that will bring peace and justice to humanity today, as was the case in our glorious history and neutralize all known weapons. I guess they're also Skynet or something. It also serves as the headquarters for some, what I assume to be, higher-ups of Turkish society. My name is Baran, and I'm the Kurd Lord. I'm the Chamber's Delibashi. I'm the one you have to see when the issues about Saudis Anatolia. That one didn't age quite so well. Now, I'm sure that you, an intelligent gamer looking at this Ormoya facility, are probably thinking, oh, oh wow, I, I guess this place and these people are pretty important. I want how they fit into the story. Two words, they don't. Ormoya, the technology that supposedly destroys all weapons, and the little Jedi council that you're shown are never brought up again. Never shown never spoken of. Not even your dad is ever brought up again. And despite Hakan earlier in the cutscene pulling out his discount Duke Nukem voice proclaiming his want for revenge, there are never any reoccurring themes about vengeance anywhere else in this game. The only two recurring characters from these cutscenes, aside from your AI teammates who get no development at all, are Hakan, i.e. you the player, and Barbaros. For those of you who don't know, there's this very well-known and popular rule to storytelling known as Chekhov's gun, with the rule basically stating that if in Chapter 1 a rifle is described to be hanging on the wall, it absolutely must go off by either Chapter 2 or Chapter 3. Apparently the writers for this game, assuming the team ever even had any writers on board to begin with, have never heard of this rule before. Instead of actually using these concepts and people introduced to us, the game opts for some poorly done, knockoff modern warfare intermission scenes, as we go around hunting terrorist leaders we've never heard of or care about at all. Sure, they're terrorists, so therefore they're bad, but we're never shown why to begin with, so the story completely lacks any and all emotional or dramatical weight. Even at the end of the game, spoilers, when we kill the big bad boss who killed your dad, it means nothing at all and instead comes off as hilarious. Hakan doesn't even say anything, we just shoot whatever the fuck his name is, and we zoom in on some random Turkish flag hanging from a building. Like I said earlier in the video, Soldiers of the Universe gets absolutely nothing right with its gameplay. Before I talk about that though, let's talk about some more trivial things. First off, the option settings. There are none. Not really, anyway. The only options you really have are resolution, resolution again, and quality. There are no options for rebinding your keys, toggle aim, or toggle crouch. I couldn't even turn off the game's motion blur, which is a huge problem for me because motion blur legitimately makes me feel nauseous. I actually had to take a few breaks while playing just to give my head a rest. If there is one thing I have to concede to this game, it's that it's mostly bug free, but the two bugs I came across were still pretty annoying. For one thing, changing the resolution setting, the second one that is, would always crash my game. So in order to even change my resolution to 1920 by 1080 I had to do it 
manually in the game's files. And lastly, you cannot grenade spam in this game. If you press G too many times in a row, i.e. just two or three times, it will permanently put all your guns into a holstered state. So you'll have to commit suicide by Jihadist and reload a checkpoint just to get them back. And to add insult to injury, this game's checkpoint placement is sadistically punishing. My best advice to avoid this just don't throw grenades, period. The range is shit, and they don't even do any damage anyway. But with bugs and the lacking options menu out of the way, we can get into how the gameplay of this game actually works. Out of the gate, I can say one thing. The gameplay is consistent consistently poor. Each level is a copy and paste sequence of the same repetitive loop of gameplay. No enemy variation, no varying weapon selection, nothing unique, and nothing to be fun anywhere. Now, I will grant you, of course horde mode type FPS games can be fun. Very fun even, if done well. But as we've already established, this game is awful. Jumping into the first level, you'll immediately notice that this is a painfully ugly looking game. The color scheme is non-existent for one thing, probably out of laziness rather than thematic choice, but worse than that, the textures and 3D models for this game are just ugly to look at. Keep in mind, what you're seeing me play on is ultra settings, at my PC screen's full resolution. And circling back to what I said about the drab color scheme, oftentimes the enemies you fight will blend into the background and land a shot on you before you ever even see them. You also start off with three guns, two assault rifles and a pistol. Get used to seeing them because with the exception of what I think is a scar in level 3 to 5, these are the only three weapons in the entire game that you will ever see. They also are incredibly unsatisfying to use, as this game's gunplay, if you can even call it that, is totally flavorless. Recoil is non-existent, the sights barely help your accuracy at all, and the sound effects lack any punch to them. But, let's be honest, in the grand scheme of things, a limited weapon selection and ugly graphics are potentially forgivable things. What isn't forgivable, however, is when your game's AI is so poorly programmed that it foundationally cripples the entire game. Soldiers of the Universe goes a step further than that, however, by not just having poorly programmed AI, but almost no AI at all. Even in the worst game you can think of, the AI will do at least something to try and fight back against the player. Move forward, move backward, maybe even charge you kamikaze style? Well, not here, fucko. In this game, enemy soldiers are glorified turrets. They stand rock still until the player comes into their field of view, fire off an entire magazine, crouch to reload, then stand back up and fire another magazine before crouching to reload again. Rinse and repeat until they are killed. The AI has no tactical know-how. They don't strategize, they just shoot, reload, and shoot. And worse yet, their accuracy is the complete opposite of how they're programmed. Nine times out of ten, their shots will hit their mark. These are without a doubt the most elite terrorists in all of human history. Typically when you think of terrorists, you think of something on par with militia groups or paramilitary groups. Generally untrained and borderline civilian fighters? Nah. Not here. These guys are straight out of Sniper Academy. This makes the game ultimately much harder than it has any right to be. Uh, smart and thoughtful enemy with real tactic and good program? Nah, that shit's too complex. Let's just fucking give the AI pixel perfect accuracy. Give me, give them all 10 years I never still experience all of them. Your AI teammates are a bit better, but they're still god awful. The only advantages they have are one, they're actually capable of moving. They're still fucking brain dead though. And two, enemies will never shoot at them. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's impossible for them to die under any circumstances, as it seems bullets just go straight through them, implying that they don't even have hitboxes assigned to them. But overall, they're still very useless, and you'll still single-handedly be carrying all through the game. For about half the first level, I actually believe that your teammates are actually technically incapable of firing their weapons, and my mind was literally blown when I saw one of my guys kill an enemy for the first time. Be sure to save her whenever this happens by the way, as you won't be able to witness it often. After trudging through one of the slowest and least fun levels of my whole life, we finally complete our main objective and are extracted via helicopter. After more hilariously bad voice acting in Modern Warfare knockoffs, we're in level 2 and oh my god, gamer.
gamers, I gotta say, this level almost broke me. After playing this level for only 10 minutes, I wanted to just shut off my game and rip off someone else's footage so bad. But alas, I'm a man of high standards and could not in good faith do such a thing. You people ought to be thanking me for this, by the way, because I forced myself back into this game just for you, buddy. But Ethan, I hear you ask, why exactly did this level almost break your gamer nuts? <laughs> it's because of a pair of two issues. One, this level is filled with sharp walled corners, and around each one is a fucking orbital strikes worth of terrorists all waiting for you to pop your 40-year-old divorced father looking ass around that corner. But hold on, King. What's that, you ask of me? Why not just press down on either E or Q and lean to check my corners? Well, that's because the devs have not implemented any lean option whatsoever. I mean, come on, guys. Even PC versions of Call of Duty have the option of leaning. Excellent work, people. I'm afraid I can only gift you Reddit silver now, rather than your kind stranger gold. Although, to give the game some credit, the one and only time I ever saw the enemy AI move at all in this game was in level 2. Granted, they got stuck on another NPC, but hey, that's still stunning progress, man. Congratulations, soldiers of the universe. While I still cannot give you gold, you have now earned a wholesome badge. Once you finally cope your way through level 2, we unfortunately have to witness the death of one of the best characters in the game. Saffron Merch <laughs> doesn't even have a name. Even though he may have been bearing the enemy standards, today we have truly lost a close friend indeed. May Mr. Merchant's soul live for forever in Allah's caring eternal bliss. Level 3, while still as much of a pile of shit fuck as any other level, is probably the least unplayable level of the whole game. The objective of this level is to kill Capture, a terrorist leader who's about to flee the area. Unironically though, my original thought while playing this level was, Kill capture? Probably kill, actually, since the capture animation would have been above the allowed budget. I, I literally wrote that down word for word in my notes. Honestly, aside from the obvious asset flipping and the fact that the fire barrels have just stopped doing their job halfway through the game, this level is just forgettable, honestly. Although the ending cutscene was still pretty funny. Don't let him escape! Take cover! Are you actually this? Stupid. Level 4 was much of the same, honestly. I actually don't even remember most of it. I remember the first three minutes and that's about it. This is the first and only level to introduce night vision, and it literally serves no purpose. I mean, look at this. It doesn't help me in any way. I can't see the enemies any better. It's just that now instead of a shitty dark filter on the screen, there's an eye straining bright green filter. Like, if anything, it's actually harder to see the enemies with night vision on. The only two other things worth of note that occur are that one of my teammates had a fun little brain seizure, and also, as we've come to expect, the ending cutscene is hilarious. Just bomb the area! Drop your gun and keep your hands where I can see him! Okay, okay! I yield! I yield! J just don't kill me! Level 5 is the final level, and what can I say honestly? Soldiers of the Universe goes out on a very high note. Apparently the terrorists have launched an attack on this vague and unnamed city, and as the counter-terrorists, we have to stop them. The first thing you'll probably notice is that the level's textures are all set to low settings. I have no clue why this happened. I reset the game multiple times, and I kept getting low-res textures that never managed to pop in all the way, despite being on ultra settings. I will say that objectively speaking, this is the most open and versatile level. When I came to this part in the park, my mind was literally glowing bright with soy boy energy at finally being able to walk more than 10 feet to either the left or right. The only downside to this was that my AI teammates finally actually had their brains pop into existence, and they began clearing house big time. Like, literally, the entire latter half of this level, I did not kill a single thing. But at the end of the level, we finally came face to face with Mr. Terrorist himself, the man who killed your father. Uh... Whoa. Wait, what, what's his name again? Ah, uh, yeah, Adnan, that was his name. But before you can take his midlife crisis Tony Stark looking ass into custody, the trap is sprung, and Mr. Badass Sniper Man is killed, and in a fit of rage, you turn to the dark side and shoot Adnan dead, pan to a Turkish flag, and end credits. An abrupt and beautiful ending to a beautiful cutscene, and better yet, an ending to this shit game. Soldiers of the Universe is the very definition of bad game design. This game does nothing right, 
and is not worth picking up under any circumstances. But hey, those cutscenes were peak level comedy at the end of the day. And because of that, I can confidently and safely say that Soldiers of the Universe earns a fair but still solid 1. Thousand out of ten. Ah, I love this game, guys. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there, big guy. Before I can end this video, I need to confess something. Guys, I am actually the lead developer of Soldiers of the Universe. Yes, unironically, guys. Me and only one of my friends are the sole creators of this game. If you don't believe me, well, here's the proof. Okay, so like. I'm here with, uh, Mr. Casual Stickman H. That's Mrs. Casual Stickman H. Okay. Okay, so, like, what was your reasoning for helping me, like, make this, uh, game, I guess? Money. Money? Yeah. Money. Okay, but, like, what about, like... Also, tax write-offs. Tax write-offs? Yeah, man. Tax evasion. For the win. That's, like... That's what George Washington yeah. would have wanted. I'm a red-pilled American, Ethan. Fucking... Italian American. You know what that means? It means I don't take shit. Okay, but like. Okay, but like. Okay, but like. Okay, so the point of us making this game was to make the perfect example of everything you can do wrong with a game, right? Yeah. Okay, that. That's good. Any like final thoughts? No. Please never contact me again. Okay. My Oscar's on the shelf, Ethan. You're below me. Seriously. Okay. Also, where's my 50% of the fucking earnings? Fuck you.